Hey everybody, this is me, the Undead Viking, and this is the Mansky Caper. Now, I'm going to be fully uh, upfront about this one. Uh, the Mansky Caper is a game that I have played uh, several times. Uh, it was the designer, uh, Ken Franklin, uh, is, is somebody I consider a very dear friend that I sadly only really ever see at gaming conventions. But I have sat down and played this with him and uh, Chris Leader and other people from Calliope Games several times. And it's kind of neat that I've gotten to see the game kind of evolve and change as time has gone on. And um, this was always one of those games that it was going to come out, it was going to come out, it was going to come out. And so now that I know it's going to go and hit crowdfunding and get published, um, I couldn't be happier uh, for all my friends over at Calliope and also uh, for the designer, Ken Franklin, who if you ever get to chance to sit down and play games with or talk to he is one gem of a human being so i would strongly suggest if you get that opportunity uh to take that up uh immediately and often if you will uh so uh this is a game uh it is a it is a very light-hearted family game about um each player being part of a like crime family and uh al mansky is this this very wealthy very well-to-do muck mobster uh that is uh going to uh he's 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 going away for a while he's going on a trip and his mansion uh is is unguarded because he doesn't trust like other mobsters or other cops or anybody to protect it he just basically he sets up booby traps and explosions and what have you within his mansion and uh he he counts on that to protect his vast vast riches of course you and the other players like you're sick and tired of hearing about how rich Almansky is and you want to go there and you want to take his loot and steal him penniless and get as much as you can now uh this is a game where each person is going to be having a, a unique uh, a, a person uh, that is going to have their own special power uh, that, that you know and variable player power is something I really really like in games uh, but it has a twist with the variable player powers your player powers are not things you personally get to use other people get to use your powers but they kind of have to pay you for that and I'll explain that when I show you how the game is played eventually most likely the mansion is going to explode from all the booby traps and you're all going to jump in the getaway car and get out of there and whoever got the most money uh, will be the winner so let me show you how the Mansky Caper is played, and then we'll come back and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, here we go. This is Mansky Caper, and let's go through how you play the game. Now, just letting you know what you see in front of you. Um, the Mansky Manor uh, that you're uh, robbing uh, has five rooms, and you can see those are the five. And this is your getaway car. Uh, you do get more room cards. You shuffle these up, and you just pick five. I guess if you really wanted to, you could make a giant mansion and make make it with all of the cards. I, but I, I don't know how well that would work, if it would work at all. Um, just I'm going to show you one of these just so you can kind of see what's on there so uh the room just has like you know a, a drawing it's the armory so you can see there's the weapons and whatever uh, all about down here this is what um will tell you what to load up these safes were uh so when you when you open, when you turn this over it'll tell you to put seven loot tokens uh two uh gasp tokens and five of the danger danger tokens uh into those safes and those are the ones you're going to be drawing out of uh to try to collect money Money. Each room has a little, uh, uh, like a track up here that shows that as you draw these kabooms, like you, normally, um, like you roll uh, the danger die, uh, and then depending upon what you roll, and I'll, I'll talk about this here in a little bit, but depending upon what you roll on this, it will determine what happens uh, when uh, you know you, you draw one of those tokens. However, on the third one, when you place it on there, the big boom means that that room in the mansion like explodes and. And like any treasure or anything that was left in there um, is gone and anybody who is left in the room uh, has to go to back to the getaway car so that's what you're gonna be looking at when you see those and they do vary uh, quite a bit so like you know here's like the, the storage room and instead of you know having seven two and five here we have twelve three and three and so you know as the players you can kind of like you know guess as to you know your luck 
uh, when you're going to be drawing out the tokens uh, from those safes. Now, each player gets a little player pawn. I've just made a four-player game and put all four of the players over there. And each player um, gets a card that tells you what their power is. So here's Java Joey, and his power is uh, when you're about to draw from a safe, you draw two tokens from the safe instead of one. And on the back side here, um, it like you know has a little, I really like coffee. I mean, I really, really like coffee. I drink it all day long. Here, let me help you with that. Obviously, you're supposed to say that really quickly because you're full of caffeine. Um, at the start of your turn, give Joey a favor token to draw two tokens from the safe, share any loot, then deal with gasps, then deal with the danger dangers. So, uh, the, the critical thing here is like at the start of your turn, you give a favor token. So favor tokens are these tokens here, and everybody starts with one. Um, you don't get to use your own special ability. Your special ability is what somebody else will use. They'll hand you that token and they'll say, I'm going to use your special ability and then they'll go ahead and do that. Now, um, once that once you hand them the favor token, obviously then they have two and now they are able to use somebody else's favor you know, like they, they have an extra token there. Uh, not having favor tokens can kind of stink because you you desperately do need them. You can only ever use one favor token in, every, in any round, so remember that. Also, there's a very special power uh, that the favor token will be used for at the getaway car, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, the big thing to remember about favor tokens is that uh, you only use one a turn, and the fact that you can wheel and deal with them. If you don't have any favor tokens and you really desperately need one uh, because it'll help you out in the room, um, and you can you can negotiate with somebody, you can offer them some of your unstashed loot, and I remember that word, unstashed loot, uh, to be able to like get a favor token from them. And the, the idea is thematically is that you know you're a family of crooks. And at one point or another, you've all done favors for one another. And so that it's that like kind of uh, unwritten uh, ec economy that you have. You know, remember that one time with the guy and the thing and, and Barbados? You know, okay, yeah, sure, I owe you that favor. I'll, I'll do you this solid here. But, you know, then you've cleared off that favor. So just keep that in mind. And I do think it works uh, really well thematically, which I'll talk about a little bit more here in just a little bit. But once you get the game set up and everybody has uh, their own special uh, powers and their, their character, um, make sure you, like, read off what you have. You actually do get um, another... Uh, player token, uh, like uh, I should say, not a player token, but a, a a one of these guards, and so like you can go ahead and put this like so, and you can have this in front of you so people can see, you know, this is you, they know that's you, and then also they can pick this up and they can read your ability and read your power and everything they need to. All right, so how does the game work? Well, uh, to begin with, two of these rooms will get unlocked. Uh, the youngest person at the table will pick a spot. So let's say my daughter is playing Joey Joey, and uh, and you know, and they're going to go there. And so, what happens then when they unlock the room? Uh, you're going to flip this over, and so here we have uh, the conservatory, and we have five loot tokens, two gas tokens, and two danger danger tokens. So. My daughter then would open up the safe, like so, and this is the loot bag. Now, I'm just going to grab a couple of tokens so you can kind of see what we're looking at here, but normally you don't look at these. So, like, here's loot tokens. You can see there's coins, and that would be, like, there's ten coins, there's five coins, there's four coins, and there's keys. As you can probably guess, the keys will be used to unlock other rooms as you collect them. But anyway, so we will then like shake this up a little bit. And so we're gonna take five of these. So my daughter would take, and you drop them in one, without looking, two, three, four, need one more here. And five, like so. And then we're gonna close that up. And then we need two uh, gasp tokens. And these come out of this like little safe here. So we're gonna take these two gasp tokens and we're going to take two of these danger danger tokens and we're going to drop those and without looking at anything that's in there and we're going to take those and we're going to shake them up like so now let's say and then my dad is going to go and let's say uh my dad is playing um you know sergeant spike so my dad is going to go and and mind you these rooms aren't like you, you you it isn't like you can only move here if you're there or anything like that just imagine you can go anywhere you want so let's say my dad picks this one we're going to flip this one over, and here we have uh, the game room. Woo, the game room! 
And so nine, four, and three. So a lot more loot in that one. I can already see, hear my daughter uh, complaining how unfair it is uh, that there's more loot in, in this one. And the, and the cool thing here is you can notice that there's only two of these danger danger tokens and notice how the track here is two as well. So let's go ahead, we have three danger danger tokens and then we're gonna take four of these gas tokens. Make sure I grab the right number. So we have four and three them in this safe and then finally nine loot tokens. Now the rest of the other two players, so like let's say uh, my wife and I are playing, so let me just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Gonna go ahead and drop those in there. All right, so uh, I'm gonna say that I am playing uh, Lucky Lucy, and I'm gonna go hang out with my daughter here, and then my wife is playing, um, here, this this uh, gentleman guy here, the, the Frankie the Fixer, and Frankie the Fixer is gonna go and hang out with my dad. So notice how we can unlock the other two rooms support in these two locations. So the first player in this situation is gonna be the youngest player, so that's gonna be my daughter, and now that she's in that room, uh, you know, now, in the first turn of the game, uh, you can't go to any of the rooms because you haven't found a key that allows you to unlock one of those other rooms. Uh, so my daughter, uh, being the youngest person playing the game, well, would be able to go first. And what she's going to do is, um, because she doesn't have any loot to go back to the getaway car with, uh, because she doesn't have a key that allows her to unlock one of the rooms, she's going to search this room and, and, and pull loot. Now, she does not have, um, she does not, can't use her own ability that allows her to draw two tokens. Now that's probably why I went there, uh, because she has the ability to draw two tokens and I wanna be able to use that on my turn. But Lucky Lucy has this ability where it says, uh, when a gas token is drawn, but before the card is drawn, um, uh, you can double this loot of, of the gas card and then ignore the tax because the gas cards can sometimes have some bad things that happen. So that's something to uh, to think about, um, but you have to do it before the card is drawn. But maybe she'll do that if she draws a gas token uh, from that safe. So to open up the safe, it's, you know, you don't have to like, you know, there's no, there's no, uh, uh, you know, code breaking or anything, or you don't have to break the, the, the combination or anything. You just shake it up. The idea is that we're all brilliant safe crackers or what have you, and, you know, we're able to do this. So, and then you open up the top without looking, you reach in, you grab a token and see what you get. So what we have here is we have a token that's going to say two coins and one gem. Now, all loot has to be distributed evenly. And what that means is, is with two of us in the room, there's one gem, and so you, and you can't you can't ever break uh, stuff up. Uh, gems are going to be worth more. They're worth five, you know, when you when you are able to uh, get out of the mansion with them. But you can't break the gem in half. Uh, nor can you make change with the coin. So let's say let's say there were uh, um, you know like there there was enough coins like to like uh, so since it's worth five, you know, let's you know say that. Um, you know, there was one gem and five coins. Well, you couldn't say, oh, well, you take the five coins, I'll take the gem. No, you can't do that. You have to split it up. However, with the two coins and with two of us in the room, we do have the option of, you know, like she's going to go ahead and take one coin and you put unstashed treasure on top. And like, this is my bag. I put my one coin on top of this. Now you might say, well, what happens to the other, uh, the other gem? And so what you're gonna do then is that you just take the gem and you put it on the room. Now, what happens is, is that there's traps and things that can happen that are gonna cause that loot to vanish. But if there's ever a situation where, let's say there's like another gem that gets added to the room, and so then we'd be able to divvy that up then. If she ever left the room and I was alone in the room and there was like one person there, they're able to scoop up all of the treasure that's in that particular spot when you can't. Whenever like the number of like, the loot changes in a room or the number of people changes the room, always check to see if you're able to distribute the, the loot that is within that spot. But in the meantime, that's going to stay right there. So she didn't draw an oops card or a gas card, I should say. Uh, so you, you don't have to uh, worry about that right now. 
But now it's my turn. Now let's say I want to use that. So I'm going to, I have a favor. I'm going to give my daughter another favor so I can go ahead and draw two tokens out of the safe and we'll see what happens. All right, let's pick this up, shake it up a couple of times and draw them up one by one. So the first one, let's see what we get here. Ah, I got a gasp token. So we got it. We got a gas token. Now, unfortunately, I can't once again can't use my own ability uh, to do that. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to. And, and technically, I wouldn't be able to use it anyway uh, because of the fact that I've already used a favor during this turn. So we're going to go ahead and draw a gas card and see what we get here. So gasp. Uh, you find a hero's medal. It's worth a gem. Put a gem in your stash bag, not in your share. It's yours to keep. That is awesome. So, like, gasp cards don't, aren't necessarily bad. If we had used that ability to kind of protect ourselves, you know, it would have been one of those, like, groan moments where you're like, ah, oh, I shouldn't have done that. But, okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to take that and we're going to go ahead and put that gem in my stash. It's mine to keep, uh, you know, and it's going to be worth those points at the end of the game. However, um, just because it's in your bag doesn't necessarily mean it's going to stay there, and I'll talk about that in just a little bit. So let's draw the second one, see what we get here. And always leave, like, the tokens you draw, you, you should leave them on the board so people can actually see, like, so they know, okay, well, I know there's only one gas token left in this, in this safe. So let's go ahead and reach in here. Let's see what we get here. Ah, and somehow I grabbed the other gas. Oh, man, I'm having good luck today. All right, so draw this one. And it's like, oh, gasp. Um, you find a secret compartment. There's more loot here than we thought add three loot tokens to this safe. So that was actually pretty cool. But here, let me just actually show that there are cards that actually have like loot on them. So like you have to see here, it's like you find three coins, uh, gasp, you find a secret passage, immediately move to another room, unlocking it if necessary and draw a token uh, from the safe. No key is necessary. Uh, you know, you ha even have ones where you can get uh, gems. Let me see if I can find one that has like uh, uh, one of the, like I like this one here. Uh, you find one gem and then gas, let bygones be bygones. Take everyone's favorite tokens, deal one per player, starting with yourself and going to your left. And so you can like, so you can redistribute the favorite tokens with that particular gas. Now remember her ability would double the loot that's on the top of the card uh, and then would allow you also then to like ignore the text as well so if there's something bad in the text and you didn't want to deal with that would be very beneficial all right so add three loot tokens to that safe so we're going to go ahead and grab three of these at random one two three and just add them to that safe now you know other players might be saying well holy cow there's lots of loot in there you know only one of these loot has been if you remember one loot was taken so there was four and now it's like down to seven all right, so then they would go. We have other people over here as well. I just want to show you. I do. I I, I usually play just because I really like um, uh, like Sergeant Spike. Loot is found in a room with two or more, but before it is shared, make some of the room go to the getaway car. So like, if you find really good loot um, in, with two or more people, you can kick somebody out, and then you can share it, so you can actually get more loot. I always like kind of Sergeant Spike's ability. So. What happens now is that uh, eventually you're going to have, let me just, like, you know, here, let's say, like, you know, you, you, you've, you've opened up quite a few, you've got some gems, you've got some, some treasure or whatever on top of your bags, and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm running the risk of something bad happening. Because a lot of the results for when you pull up a danger danger token and you have to roll one of these dice is that, uh, like the loot that you're carrying and the loot that's sitting in the room will blow up and it'll be gone. So you decide, I'm going to go to the getaway car. When you go to the getaway car, you get to take all of your loot and you get to go ahead and put it into your bag. And once it's in the bag there, it's stashed, you, you've, you've placed it down, you're good to go. However, there is one thing that can happen. If there is one player that's just gotten super lucky, you just know their bag is full of tons of loot. What you can do is if they go to the getaway car, you can go to the getaway car as well. And if you have a favor, you can burn the favor forever. Uh, it basically, it's, it's removed from the game and you basically say, it's called a hey buddy. And what happens then is that 
like, so I went there, and I would take these, and I would put them into my stash bag, let's say. But let's say, like, Ryland's just done really, really well, and my daughter is just, like, really, really pleased with herself. She's got, I know she's got tons of coins, and she's got a bunch of gems sitting in her stash, and she, you know, and, and I and I want a piece, right? So, oh, and by the way, I should have taken that, because when she left the room, I would have been all by myself. So, uh, I can say, hey, buddy, you know, let's divvy it up. And you burn the favorite token, and then the players that are at uh, the that are at the, uh, the the car have to dump out their entire stash and even out the stashes between the two players. And that can really elevate somebody that hasn't been doing so well. And if they can time it right with somebody that's been doing awesome, they can even that out and can bring one, bring like possibly a runaway leader back down to earth, but also two, you know, elevate somebody that maybe is, is like languishing and behind that back up to like a contention, which is something I really like. And you gotta remember, um, the, the you know, I really enjoy Calliope games because they're very lighthearted and they're fun and they're fun spirited and things like that, in my opinion, are a very fun spirited aspect of the game. And plus, since you are like destroying the favor and, and removing it from the game entirely, uh, I you know it, it's a costly action to do and it, it isn't something you can take very lightly. So. Uh, I wanted to talk about the danger danger. I didn't draw one. So uh, let's 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 put us back here and you know let's just let's manufacture a situation. Let's put like one gem in there and like one coin and then you know go ahead and once again put some 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 sta some loot stash that ha we haven't been able to uh to, to put away in our bags yet. And let me just, you know, fake it here and let's go ahead and draw the danger danger token. So we take the danger danger token if we search and we're going to go ahead and place that on there. Now as long as it isn't the last spot that, that causes the room to explode, what then is going to happen is you're going to take this 12-sided die and there's all these different results on there and you go ahead and you roll it and you see what you get. So in this case what we rolled is like you can see there's like the dynamite and it's on top of that diamond and that is all the loop blew up. Uh, return to the supply box, which is this right there. Um, all of the unstashed loot of everyone in the room, plus any leftover loot in the room, but everybody stays put. So my daughter and I would lose all of this loot. It would go, it would go bye bye, plus any loot that was still sitting in the room, like this, and it would be blown up. But nobody would have to leave the room. Note the stuff that's in our bags would be fine. Now there's other things that can happen, like your loot blew up. So the person that drew the danger danger token, if they got this, that one person will return to the supply all of their loot and they would go to the getaway car uh, because like, I don't know, you burned your hand or something like that and you're forced out of the room. Uh, now remember, uh, like if there was still loot on the floor, you know, like let's put, you know, these, these two things like that gem in there, because I'd be kicked out of the room, my daughter who's sitting there would be able to snag those and put those in her bag if that was the case. So um, you can sometimes roll like this, and that's a good result. That means that you have uh, disarmed the bomb and nothing bad happens and you're fine. Uh, you just uh, like, you, you know, it's just you, you, you breathe a sigh of relief and you didn't lose anything. You can get this result, which means that the room blew up. Now that is the exact same thing that happens if you get that last spot there. Um, when you room blows up, you return to the supply um, the unstashed loot of everyone, plus all the leftover loot, everyone in the room goes back to the getaway car, and then you just remove the card and the safe completely from the game. They're gone, you can't go to that room anymore. And then finally, you can get this result, which means that Mansky has returned. The, 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 the guy who run, owns the mansion, Al Mansky, has come back. And so this, what happens now is everybody runs. Everybody hides in fear, um, and they, but they stay in the room they're in. But you return to supply box the unstashed loot of everybody, all leftover loot, leftover loot from every room that you've uncovered, and uh, you just stay exactly where you are. Uh, the idea is is that um, Al comes back. He kind of notices that like somebody's been there, but he doesn't. But he tidies up the place and he cleans it up. Basically, puts all the loot away and takes it, takes it takes it back. 
and then uh, he leaves, and then the game continues. So you don't get caught, you don't get hauled off to jail, he doesn't, you know, uh, give you a, a, a Colombian necktie or anything like that. This is a family game, remember, there, there's no, like, gruesome deaths or anything, but you do lose all the loot that you had on you. Now, remember, stash loot doesn't ever go away except for when you have to divvy it up at the getaway car. Also, if you have keys, you get to keep keys. Um, the keys are actually going to be worth uh, loot at the end if they're unused. So hold on to keys because they are valuable and you can't lose them in any of those situations. Uh, the game will end one of two ways. Um, when either all the rooms have blown up, uh, in which in which case like basically you've emptied out uh, the, the each safe and like you found all of the explosions and, and you've blown up all the rooms and then the game is over or if all of the players are on the getaway car and they all unanimously agree that they're gonna leave and they're gonna go and, and now we're gonna see who wins um, when when the game ends everybody opens up their bags uh, for every coin you have it's worth a point. Uh, for every key you have, it's worth three points. And for every gem you have, it's worth five points. Uh, whoever has the most points will obviously lose. Now, you might be wondering about this unanimous decision. That's where these like little tokens come into play as far as remembering what's left in in the uh, in the safe. So you will be thinking it's just like, look, um, there might be like one or two scant little loot tokens here and there, but. Uh, there's no way that that, uh, that, that it, you, we're going to avoid not getting blown up and, and getting hurt or what have you. So uh, we're just better off not going and trying to find you know that one rogue loot token. Or maybe you figure out that there's nothing left but little dynamite uh, danger danger tokens left. So you just you all decide let's just go let's see who wins and you know that is that. So uh, you know what? Um, like I said, this is this is a game that my daughter and I really really enjoyed. We even got my wife to play a little bit. And um, the last time I played was with my dad, so that's why I played with uh, the four of us. That's the four. he he uh, actually just recently uh, went back to uh, his condo in Arizona and left the frozen north of Minnesota behind him. But um, so, but I made him play this before he left, and he had a great time as well. So uh, I really liked it. I knew I was going to like it because, as I said, I had played it before and. Other versions, if you will, uh, but let me talk more about this game uh, and this version and this uh, the, the the fun I've had with it uh, in my final thoughts. All right, so that was the man's key caper. Uh, as I already said, the game is fun. It, it's awesome. Um, it, and, and you know, when I say lighthearted, I don't mean necessarily that the game is light. Uh, I mean this isn't ever going to be confused with a brain burning euro or anything like that. It isn't you know an 18xx game or anything. It, it is a highly thematic game that is geared towards somebody that is just looking to sit down and have a fun time, kind of messing with each other, kind of messing with the game and just having a blast whether you win or lose. But there are still lots of things here that I really, really like that give the game some grit and some some like teeth to it. Um, I really like the decision of do you push your luck? Do you push your luck sitting there and like keep collecting loot, keep collecting loot, or do you head to uh, the head to the giveaway car? And the giveaway car sounds like it's a great decision. Like go there, stash the money, you get to keep it, right? But what if somebody thinks you have too much loot and they decide, hey, I'm going to go to the giveaway car and I'm using my favor, and you're going to you're we're going to divvy it up, right? That's something you you run the risk of happening. Plus, as soon as you leave and go to the getaway car, you're giving up on the possibility of loot showing up. What if the next person plays and they grab a thing and it's like five gems or something and you just weren't there? You don't get any of them. So it, it's this fun, do I push my luck? Do I, you know, do I, do I play it safe? By playing it safe, you're actually pushing your luck as well. And so it has that wonderful interchangeable atmosphere going on all the time and it just seems like with for me no matter what decision I make it's always wrong but that can be really fun and everybody at the table is laughing and having a blast and there's nothing better than like seeing my dad and and his granddaughter uh cackling over the fact that they just really put me over the barrel on something and, and really really put it put it to me and like as they're gleefully dropping more and more money into their bags and and you know i've got nothing i've, I've just got burnt off fingertips because the dynamite blew up in my face so 
it's stuff like that that really makes the game lots of fun and makes the game exciting to sit down and play it again and again and again. And I do find that games like this that have relatively simple rules but lots of different players that you can have, like the characters, lots of different rooms so the games are different each time. These are the games that, you know, now later on in my life as I've become more, you know, gaming with my family um like stuff like this comes off the shelves more and more and and, and it's just it's it, these are the games that like create those really really fun memories for my gaming group and for um me and my family that I'm, I'm just gonna i'm gonna I'm, it's it's a game that's gonna come down and be played on holidays it's gonna be played on like rainy weekends things like that and i'm glad that this is finally getting like published and it's gonna be done amazingly well by Calliope and, and I'll have a really, really awesome copy. But I've got this one uh, for the time being and this one plays perfectly as well. So so there you go. I think if, if you're looking for something like this, you know, the kind of press your luck, variable player powers kind of thing, I strongly suggest that you back Mansky Caper and uh, get a copy to put on your shelf. I doubt you will be disappointed. You're going to have a heck of a lot of fun with it. So there you go. If you have any questions about it, please ask away. I'll be happy to answer those as best as I can. As always, thank you very much for your time and watching this video. And until next time, I'm the Undead Viking. And I'm telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right. Bye-bye.